What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp speed modeling video for you. So in today's video, we're going to model a hanging light inside of SketchUp. And before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to give you a start to finish training in SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, um, you want to take your SketchUp modeling to the next level, make sure you check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this lamp, you're going to need a couple different extensions. Um, the extensions that we're going to use, we're going to use Round Corner from Fredo 6, as well as Lines to Tubes and Pipe Along Path. And I will link to all of those in the notes down below. But let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to draw a circle. So we're just going to use the circle tool. And I'm going to assume that the radius on this is probably going to be around 4 inches. I'm not sure if that's exactly right, but we'll go ahead and go with that for right now. And I'm just going to extrude this up probably about 8 inches and one thing we can do here is if the scale ends up looking off a little bit later on we can come back in here and um, we can kind of adjust that using the scale tool all right so the first thing I do before I draw my different edges in here is I'm actually gonna put this in a group so I'm just gonna triple click on this right click and click make group and the reason for that is because I don't necessarily want the geometry of the um, of the pipes and pieces that I'm creating here to merge with this. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click inside this group and right click and click find center. And what that's going to do is that's just going to drop a guide point in the middle of this. I can use this a little bit later. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw another circle on top of this and then I'm actually going to move that down probably about four inches and the reason I'm doing that is I'm gonna use this as my path to extrude my tube along so that's how we're gonna create the kind of wire pieces around here and so it's probably a little bit easier if you go in here and turn your hidden geometry on just so you can kinda of see where everything is and so once I've kind of moved a copy of this curved line down here, I'm just going to draw some lines along the axes. And so the only reason I'm doing that is just as kind of a guide. So you don't necessarily need these lines in here, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw those just, just so that I don't accidentally draw these off axis. So it just makes it easier for me to draw these lines straight down. But what these lines are going to be is these are just going to be... Um, these are going to be the path that I'm going to use in order to extrude kind of the wire mesh along here. So once you've done that, you can kind of erase out your extra. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to select all of these edges by dragging a box across them, and I'm going to use the extension Lines to Tubes in order to create some tubes along here. So and I'm using Lines to Tubes as opposed to a Pipe Along Path um, because Lines to Tubes allows me to do this even though my path isn't uh, continuous. So all I'm going to do, and again, I'll link to this extension in the notes down below, is I'm just going to find the option for Convert Arc Circles, Curves, Lines to Cylinders under tools and I'm going to use that to draw some eighth inch tubes along this path. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And so it's going to tell me it created 28 tubes and if I turn my hidden geometry off you can see how it's got all these tubes sitting in here kind of on this face. And if you wanted to you could scale these out just a little bit so that they're not actually touching this face. I'm not really super concerned about it for this model. Um, and also if it makes if uh, if you don't like this kind of sitting here merged on the face, you can go ahead and you can add like a brush stainless material or something so that this is a different color. So now what we have here is we have kind of this cylinder that's going to make up the cover of our light. We also have this metal piece on the top that makes up this wire mesh. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and round off this edge using the extension round corner. And you could also draw this as kind of a profile and extrude it in a circle if you wanted to. But for me, I really like using round corner because it's really easy to just come in here and uh, just tell this to offset it like a half inch or something like that and then click and you can see how it's going to round this edge off so i will link to the extension round corner down below but uh, that's one of my favorite extensions for just rounding things off and that kind of thing and the other nice thing about this and uh, we're not going to make too many adjustments right now but if you ever decide that this is too long and you want to make this shorter you can turn hidden geometry on and just select this geometry and then you can move this up and down to adjust this like for right for right now I'm going to leave this as is, but you can see how I was able to kind of move that up and down in order to make that adjustment. And so we're going to come back in a little bit and we're going to add a bulb and everything else on the inside of this. For right now, what I want to do is I want to model kind of the housing up above. And so to model the housing up above, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing another circle on the top of this. So I, I kind of want to keep the metal parts 
separate from the other parts. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a circle right here. And actually, I'm gonna use the center of this circle, but I'm actually gonna draw this out a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna draw this so that it's a little wider than this piece right here. I'm also probably gonna come in here and adjust the number of segments to something smoother, like 48. So you can see how I clicked on this edge and then changed the number of segments in the entity info. What that allows me to do is just make this look smoother. Um, and again, there's kind of a trade-off between performance and this look, but in this case, I think uh, 48 is gonna be kind of a good, good uh, center point or balanced point there for the level of detail. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm just gonna push pull this up just a little bit and honestly, this probably um, this probably moves inward just a bit. So I'm going to use the scale tool in order to scale this face in just a bit, not much. I think I did that about 0.99. So you can see how this gives us a little bit of a taper on this edge. So now what I'm going to do, and uh, remember, if you hold the control key, you can scale this face about center. So you can scale the top of this in um, around the center point here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push pull this up until whatever whatever height I think kind of the stainless cover for this light is going to be or whatever thickness that is. So in this case, I think it's gonna be about this thick and I'm just gonna use the scale tool about center again to kind of scale this in. So you can see how I'm just kind of doing this. Um, I'm probably gonna do it until it's about the same width as the light down below. So you can see how this is approximately that same width. And honestly, you could probably scale it until it was exactly the same width if you really wanted to. I think this is is gonna work for right now. And one cool thing about this is if you wanted to adjust how tall this is, like if you made it too tall or too short, you could just uh, double click on this circle and use the move tool to move it up and down in order to adjust kind of the height there. So all of this is still editable once you've kind of created it. So I think we've done a pretty good job of that piece so far. And we're just gonna finish roughing this out again using the um, using the push pull tool and the scale tool. And so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna push pull this up, I'm gonna offset this in a little bit, and then I'm gonna push pull the resulting face up again. And in this case, I'm just gonna use the scale tool in order to scale that in. And I'm probably gonna select it and move it up and down just a little bit. And the other thing I might do is I might come in here with round corner and uh, just kind of round off this edge over here. So in this case, I don't really want that one. I just want, there we go. I just want to round off this edge right here. And I'm probably going to change this offset to something like a quarter inch instead of a half inch. And I'm just going to click right here. So all that does is that kind of rounds off this edge. Just makes this look a little bit more realistic. And I'm not 100% sure. Let's see if we can do that up here. I don't know if we can or not, honestly. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and round off this top edge as well. You can see how when you round these off, it just gives you a more realistic transition in there. And so we've done a pretty good job of roughing out the shape up here that we want this lamp to be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna do a view hidden geometry and that way I can see this geometry in here and I can offset this in so that I can create kind of the hanging uh, wire piece that's up above. So you can see how I'm push pulling this up. That's gonna make up this metal piece up above that this lamp hangs from. And one thing to note about this is this actually created this and all of these faces are unsoftened and unsmoothed. So um, it's kind of rough geometry right now. I'm just gonna drag a box across that and use the soften edges. And I'm just gonna check this box for soften coplanar. That's gonna soften all of the edges in here and make this look like a uh, smooth shape again. So now we've kind of got our light roughed out and uh, we need to bring in and create some of the details on the edges here. And so I'm going to start off and I'm going to do a view. I'm going to turn my hidden geometry back on again. And uh, so the reason that I want to do that is because I want to be able to see where these edges are because I want to pick one of these faces in here in order to start drawing this circle along. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm just looking straight up and down and finding this line because this line, and I may just drop a guide point here for right now. There we go. So I dropped a guide in here using the tape measure tool so I can see where this face is gonna be. And uh, so now what I wanna do is I wanna draw this, I want to draw a circle, but I'm gonna tap the right arrow key in order to draw this directly on the uh, 
in order to draw this directly on the red axis. So you can see how if I don't draw this along the red axis, this may, uh, when we extrude it out, um, be kind of an odd angle. So I just wanted to make sure that I did that. And uh, one thing to note about this is because we drew this on a face, um, that's kind of separated by a line right here. You can see how SketchUp is basically splitting this. So all we need to do to fix that is just push pull this out just a little bit and then push pull the other face out. And then you can erase this line here. And now this is a full face that you can push in and out. Um, that's just kind of a workaround because SketchUp sees this edge as a line and so it split that face initially. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make this a component. And we're just gonna call this something like, we'll just call this metal tab. And I don't want this to do a cut opening. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to click create. And all that's doing is now this is in here and uh, we can start kind of working with it um, in order to rough out this shape without, uh, without this merging with any of our geometry in our actual lamp over here. So I'm just going to group this geometry. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the path that these kind of pipe hangers or um, steel tube hangers are going to follow and we're going to use a pipe along path in order to extrude something along this in just a second. And before I do that, I'm going to turn on x-ray mode. All right, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw a guide straight up and down so I can kind of see the center of this whole thing. And I turned on x-ray mode using this tab up above just so I could kind of get in here. And when you turn on x-ray mode, you can kind of inference to things through faces. Though this doesn't seem to want to let me do that. So maybe I just need to draw a line through here. So now I can come in here and I can actually draw a line or a rectangle centered on this circle. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap the R key and then I'm going to tap the up arrow key. That's going to lock me to the blue axis. And I'm going to move my mouse until I'm over this line. And in this case, I'm going to tap the control key, which lets me draw a uh, box based on the center rather than the edge. And so what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to draw this box in here. And I'm just going to type in 2 comma 2 and hit the enter key. That's going to let me draw a 2 by 2 box. And then I can kind of push pull this box up probably another two inches. And if you don't like the way that looks, you can use the scale tool to make that bigger or smaller. So maybe I'm gonna scale this up about 1.25 or something like that. And you'll note that I'm holding the control key again to scale this about center. And so once I've done that, I'm gonna select it and group it just so it's not merging with everything. And then I'm just gonna draw a line to about the middle of this face. Whoops, and I should be inside this component before I do that. So we'll double click in here and we'll do that again. And so once I've done that, what I can do is I can come in here and I can select all of these edges and I can use the extension pipe along path in order to draw a little pipe that's about an eighth of an inch along this edge. And so that's going to look like our little hanger wire. And so from inside my component, I can then take this group and I can make a copy of this. And in this case, I'm going to offset this one. So I'm going to turn x-ray mode back off. I'm going to offset this face and I'm going to push pull it out. And then I'm going to make one more copy of this object over here. And so what that gave me is that gave me this um, this kind of adjustable looking hanger piece over here. And then all I have to do is just use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy. And I'm just gonna use the scale tool to flip it. So I'm just holding the control key and moving this till it says negative one. Then you can just move these edges back until they're aligned, there we go, with your face. And so now we can go ahead and we can erase out this little guideline that we had in here. And uh, another thing you may want to do, because you may want this to be a little bit more realistic, is you may want to delete out this face that gets created in here. And I'm actually going to take this whole light and I'm just going to move it up. So I'm just moving this. I'm using the move tool and I tap the up key to lock this to the blue axis. And you can see how I'm just moving this up so that it kind of sits inside of this housing. 
So and one thing you may notice about that is when we do that, um, we don't necessarily get the best look of this wire piece right here. So the wire piece isn't really hanging down where we want it to be. It should be down here so that it's exposed. Well, what we can do in this case is you could either take the whole thing and move it down if you wanted to, or if you click inside here and you select this bottom wire and make sure you get the bottom faces of these edges as well, you can just use the move tool to just kind of ex extend this down until it hangs down a little bit. So you can see how because this is all raw geometry and I'm selecting those edges, I can just select and move that whole thing at once. So, and you may want to come in here and erase out this extra um, guide geometry that you had in here before. So you can see how that gives us this kind of a lamp look in here. And the other thing I'm going to do, because this guide point's still in here, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rough out this bulb. So I'm just going to come in here and I turned on x-ray mode just by clicking on this just so I could see through here. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle along the green axis, which I can use to then rough out the size of the bulb. So in this case, I'm going to move this down and make my rectangle a little bit longer. And I'm going to turn x-ray mode back off and I'm going to hide this face and I'm going to hide these and then I can just come in here and I can just rough out the profile of that bulb. So in this case, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a file import and actually import an image of the bulb and then just trace it out and extrude it in a circle. So I'm going to speed this video up while I do that. All right, and then all we have to do is just come back in here and just apply our materials. So in this case, we're going to apply a glass material to our glass. And then I'm just going to apply this stainless material to the rest of it. So you could either select everything. So I'm just going to click and drag across here and then deselect my bulb, maybe. So I'll hide my bulb and then I'll select everything else and I'll just apply this stainless material to it. And if you want to, you can come in here and first of all, this doesn't map super well. I'm not going to get into that too much, but you can come in here and you can edit the material in order to make this look a little bit more realistic. Um, but you could also come in here and use something like Fredo scale or something like that in order to uh, really map this texture a little bit better. Um, so we'll take this and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply the glass material to this bulb as well. So then I'm going to do an edit, unhide all, and there you go. And you can come in here and you can adjust this just by moving the circle up and down to make this longer or shorter depending on what you need it to be. But probably just come in here and just make the whole thing a group and then there you go. You've got this light fixture that you can use in any of your models. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Um, was there anything in it you didn't know about? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.